This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 675 Tuesdays. We've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And with me from Beacon, New York, he's the only Mayhemer with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE. Uh, he is Mad Mike. Hi, Sorg. Hey. Um, I now have permission from the New Day to um, get married. You do. We, we showed that on the Facebook and on, on mm-hmm. Gold. You guys can sec- check that out, too. Uh, yeah, Big E left a message for Mad Mike. Yeah. Yeah, it was very nice. Very he nice. gave me permission to do other things too, but I'm yeah. I'm only going to say that once. Yeah, because they're, they're very explicit as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very, very. Um, big E, Big E supports the Big O. Oh, that's the title of the episode. All right. Uh huh. <laughs> Chris Larusso is here, back in the studio. Rep- Cheers. Representing Jack Pollock. Represent you can't you can't represent Jack Pollock without having a Jack Pollock. Yes. Yeah, we'll soon, Jack. That's right. We got we got to see if we can get him on the show here. He's uh he's, we, he hasn't been seen in so long. Oh, no, he's been off the radar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be good to kind of catch up and see how it's doing, uh, with him. So uh, that'll be good to see. But uh, so Jack, if you're listening, come on on the show. Come on down. <laughs> so we'll drop you up on the tee. Come up to beach. Yeah, here. there you go. Uh, but uh, oh, Chris. Who is IWC Tag Team Champion, Imagine Championship, or, or I'm sorry, Imagine, what's it? Imagine Wrestling. Imagine Wrestling Champion, mm-hmm. Premier Championship Wrestling Champion, mm-hmm. and Route 33. Got it! Nailed it! I can Route keep my clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Hey, when you threaten me going into the show like that, I'm going to do... Well, we have we have this this uh, giant window that's just yes. facing the street. I mean, it didn't stop Troy Lords two weeks ago. No, and apparently Dutters. So Dutters will put her bare butt on the window, yes. I mean, while the tea is rolling by? Uh, no, no, usually from the outside. Moving on. Uh, but yes. Well, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. But you're going to see Dutter's butt if you join us here in person. If you want to do that, hit us up at that email address. Good times. <laughs> Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. <laughs> I think I've done this a minute. You can tell you've, you've been here a lot. Mm-hmm. So we'll not... It, it, it's not <laughs> up. Yes. Apparently... From the chat room, Honey Badger has also received a video message from Big E. What? <laughs> I guarantee it was different than the one you received. Oh, Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Is it similar to the one that, Be- that Becky Lynch's mom might have gotten? Oh, regarding wedding things. Oh, nice. Wow. So, so maybe it was very similar. Okay. Hopefully. hopefully. Uh, All right. Was there gyrating involved? <laughs> But you can also hit us up 412-206-WMS0. Tweet us at Mayhem Show Facebook page and group for Wrestling Mayhem Show where a lot of great conversation is there and other interesting things in the wrestling world. Um, also, you can uh, go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find links to subscribe to us in video and podcast form. Also, please look us up on your favorite platform and rate us and leave a review help us get in front of more eyeballs and ear holes uh you can also ask your uh uh, device that you talk to like the google home uh amazon echo and uh uh, home pod if you got one of those funky devices and ask to listen to the wrestling mayhem show podcast and that's then the cia will know what you're listening to yes well they already know we're already on a list you're on a list for listening to the show well that's very true okay let's let's be honest about this now i'm on a list for a lot of reasons (laughs) moving on yes yes i mean i already ran in the site CIA this year, but uh, anyways, um, uh, every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Live, you can join us, be part of the chat room, just like Tina is from uh, out there in the Seattle area, Jen Carlin's um, down in front, <laughs> and uh, and hey, Badger's joining us as well. The the find out of, about um, the realistic things in Lion King, and and I think I saw 
that uh, the second most popular rookie of the year, Jackson Argos, was already. That is there. right. That is right. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe we'll mm-hmm. mention later about the first rookie of the year uh, that we talked about last night on the on the Monday wrap up. Um, also, if you are catching this on one of the other outlets, we are streaming to a couple other places like uh, Twitter and and or everything. Uh, again, that chat room is happening on Facebook Live. But if you're catching us on the podcast and really want to yell at us about our opinions, probably Mike's uh, hit us up at hashtag <laughs> WMS six seven five and at mayhem show on twitter to continue the conversation related to this show and thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and by the way and big thank you to uh bradley actually uh he kind of posted our, about our patreon here and uh and and about why he supports us and and everything and um and that is uh i, I shared that with everybody that works with the show and uh in our wrestling uh pr- pr- productions uh, here in the area, and really do appreciate it. I want to give a shout out to him, uh, uh, especially. But uh, thank you to everybody that does support the show. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show, including Bo Diggity! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and Team Hammer Fist at the Pocky Club $5 level. And I don't know what we'll talk about on that for. Uh, for with uh, Chris here later uh, after the show goes uh, for the after dark. Alex Miller, absolutely agree. Caitlin's looking better with than ever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She popped up last night. That's right. Uh, Pocky Club five dollar, including Bradley Brothers, Doc Remini, Dave Ponder, Kyle Turner, and Daniel Towery at our Pizza Club ten dollar level. Ryan Clark with thirteen dollars, lucky thirteen, and our manager twenty dollar level. Occupy prowrestling.com go check out all that thank you so much everybody that supports the show so there is a little bit of wrestling news we didn't have like a million shows like we did the week before so I had to dig a little bit here first of all uh well we are pending <laughs> an upcoming wednesday night war mike are you ready to just off the midweek midweek war podcast well, hold on hold on let me see if i still know how to do this <clears throat> The man, we. <clears throat> no, All right, we gotta work on it. Okay, I'm not there we'll yet. Nah, nah, you're we'll not back in the fighting not, shape I'm yet. Not, I'm not there yet. I got Sorg. Sorg, we need to run a training montage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? In, what is it just you yelling into into a mirror and drinking lots uh, of lemon gargling, juice? Gargling, and, you know things Sorg, like that. Sorg, so. my my larynx is a finely tuned instrument. Oh, finely tuned. Finely tuned. Just I have to of... gargle with salt water. Three times a day when I was doing the midweek work. <laughs> you were doing it for like four different shows, so that was a lot. Yes. Of, yeah, yeah. There was that a lot. True. That is true. And it, it became my catchphrase. Well, you know what? Can we just get a recording of Christopher Joseph doing it? Oh. We, that should be the, the intro. He's done it before. I know. Well, we can get the recording. From, yeah, we, we have the have recording to, of him it. doing it. So we, we may need his permission to air it. <laughs> well, no, did, didn't we, he, did, did he no, do he it did. on the show? He did it on the show. He, and then, then you own it. Yeah, we, like, it, that's fine. We own Chris the Joseph. We, we're good. No, you, yeah, no, 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 I didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> Hold on. I didn't say that. I did not say that. I said you own that clip. <laughs> There's a big effing difference. Next thing you know, the, the, the lawyers for Lucha Underground, who we know can be pretty aggressive. That's okay. Well, that's trying okay. to lock down Jeff Cobb. That's okay. I got, I got the, you I got the, what they do with their performers. It's okay. I got they the Gavel David Lawless's card. I'm good. Oh, you're in, you're in <laughs> fucking trouble in that case. Sorry, Lawless. Yeah. Um, and if you ask me, you're in even worse trouble. So, <laughs> but anyways, the reason I bring this up, because there's a story, uh, according to wrestling Co. Wednesday night dynamite. That, when, what? Wednesday is night that di- is that the official title? Wednesday night dynamite. I, I AEW. Believe, uh, I believe. Well, I mean, they they copyrighted Tuesday night dynamite. Okay. Uh, months ago. They better not. Which I believe was supposed to play off the initials of TNT. Mm-hmm. Tuesday night dynamite, and um, I think that the it was going to be it was going to be Tuesday or Wednesday mm-hmm. at, at some point, but. I believe that we are going to see uh, Wednesday Night Dynamite, which will yeah, be... Yeah, it, it can't be Tuesday because of the NBA. Mm. Is that a fact? That's that's what I've heard, yeah. Just, okay, well, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, yeah. TNT, because, has, TNT has a very good relationship with the NBA mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. has a lot of the finals, mm-hmm. which is, if you remember, the finals used to fuck over Nitro Yep. Yeah, it used to get horribly. one over Nitro. But also, Wimbledon used to fuck up Raw. 
Oh yeah, I remember yeah. that. Mm-hmm. There, I was. Uh, I've and the been, dog show. Well, the dog show was always a joke. <laughs> the amazing dog show. But I, I, uh, I've been uh, actually listening to the uh, Brian and Vinny podcast on uh, uh, Figure Four Online, mm-hmm. and they're doing their Retro Raw and Retro Nitro uh, podcast, where they go, you know, 19 years ago this week, and they bring up the fact, and I'm, I'm a little behind. I'm about nine months behind or so. But they bring up that there was a point where Raw was preempted by it was either Wimbledon or the Dog Show. Mm-hmm. So Raw aired at 11 p.m. till 1 a.m. and they still beat Nitro by wow. a full rating point. So Nitro went unopposed for three hours, mm-hmm. and Raw still beat them. And this was like the Right before Russo showed up. Okay. So but they were in dire straits at that point. They were in dire straits at that point. But it was one of those situations where um, the NBA playoffs, mm-hmm. Wimbledon, the dog show, these were these all used to be major factors in the Monday Night Wars because yeah. oh, it yeah. meant you either you went unopposed and your options were you either go late at night, yeah. you go way past prime time into late night hours. Yeah. Or you have to air on another day of the week. Yeah. Thursday Raw Thursday. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, that was when Shawn Michaels lost his smile was on a Thursday Raw. Yep. Thursday Raw Thursday. Yeah. And they also did uh Saturday Raw. They did a Saturday Raw because of uh because of Wimbledon and mm-hmm. Nitro would do 1 hour Nitros. Mhm. Because they, I, and I think they went on at like 7. Mhm. And so to circle back to our original point um, <laughs> three weeks ago, uh, the fact that they're going on Wednesday nights mm-hmm. might mean that – I don't know if, if TNT has any other sports obligations that could bump them. Or at least it's probably the less affected, right? Um I know TBS does baseball playoffs. I don't know if TNT does. I don't know if TNT does. I know TBS absolutely. Well, TBS has that relationship back when they were with the Braves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they still have the old relationship with Major League the Baseball. The Superstation. Yeah, the Superstation. But, and that's why Atlanta got so popular uh, nationwide was because. Yeah, and then they lost to the Yankees yeah. every time. <laughs> but, I mean, if you remember when I was when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, like the Braves were the shit. Mm-hmm. And it was because they had that the Braves and the Cubs, because the Cubs had WGN, which was mm-hmm. a super station, which went nationwide, and uh, TBS, which had the Braves, which went nationwide. So no matter where you were in the country, you could watch Cubs baseball or Braves baseball, no matter what market you were in. And, um, you know, TBS, obviously, that became very important for wrestling expanding nationwide. For that same reason, that it didn't matter where you were. If you had TBS, you had wrestling. Um, some other rat holes in here. Uh, but uh, anyways, <laughs> leading into that, uh, the reason we're talking about well, one. Two. God damn it, Elijah. So there's there's Wednesday, there's Wednesday but uh, uh, apparently NXT is suppo- uh, WWE is supposedly in talks about maybe bringing NXT to Fox Sports. Fox Sports which, One, Fox Sports One, yep. which, which is a national like it's not no like, it's it's in your if you if it's if you have anything beyond basic cable you have Fox Sports right one. if you have if you have TNT you have Fox Sports yeah if you really? have if you have more than if you have more than thirty channels you have Fox Sports One okay <laughs> is that the line <laughs> well no if you have more than like the bare minimal right. cable and, and I mean most people do most people have more than bare minimal yeah. if you have more than bare minimal cable you have Fox Sports One which that was a big deal when the UFC went on Fox Sports, right? Because that meant the UFC suddenly had much greater penetration into, yeah. uh, you know, different uh, See, households. I, and that, I feel like when, like, when TNA went on Fox Sports, it was still pretty regional. Oh no! It, was, it they went on the regional version yeah. of Fox Sports. I, they they, they weren't on Fox Sports. Fox Fox Sports One is a national yeah. uh, network. Yeah, Fox Sports. You know. Fox Sports Pittsburgh, which I don't even know if that was the name of it. I think at the time it was Fox. I think they had just taken over all, like all those and became it's before it became Root Sports and AT and T Network. But that was also and, when uh, yeah. you could get TNA on a Friday. It was like Friday, yeah, at it was 3 Friday at four or something like and that. And then they would have time clocks for each of the matches mm-hmm. and like tickers running and everything. It was it was crazy that they were doing this. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that. Uh, 
you know, it's probably going to be a Wednesday night war. Mm-hmm. Um, WWE hasn't made it a, I mean, it's no secret. Mm-hmm. If, if, uh, if AEW goes to Wednesday night, they're going to fight them on, they're not going to fight them on the WWE network. No, they're going to go on national TV and go ahead. Yeah. Head. They have a product that's strong that's mm-hmm. selling out arenas for takeovers. Right. Mm-hmm. So why not put that up, put a bigger exposure. They have how many other, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people will stop their WWE network subscription for NXT going to TV. I feel, I mean, and again, this is just me personally, but I mean, I do it for the archives. Right. I, I, I there's well, archives there's, and the pay-per-views, right? Archives and pay-per-views because yeah. there's, there's very little, even the original, you know, the, the shield special mm-hmm. or thing or other special events that are, airing live or smackville this saturday night <laughs> that's I, a thing it's, yeah it's, it's a terrible name it's an um, awful god's a god awful name well i mean Sorry. this is also the company that gave us the viking experience so mm-hmm. you know yeah teach their yeah. own and and the kabuki warriors mm-hmm. i don't hate the kabuki warriors okay mm-hmm. i mean I, I i don't hate it as much as i hated the viking experience well, I mean, I hate sure. that. that. That's the lowest bar. I hate that his name's <laughs> Eric, but at least he's not Ivar. <laughs> you had a cool name. It's Rowan Hansen. It will be for the rest of That's time. That's right. That's right? right. I think Corey messed up the name the other night. So they all mess up the name. Corey had well, a funny I'm, thing. This, was, I mean, hell, God, this Shane, had to be about. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry, Mike. Go Shane ahead. Said, Shane said Kenny Owens tonight. So <laughs> Chris, what were you saying? Um, there was a thing, this was months ago, but, uh, as, uh, EC3 was coming to the ring, Corey Graves was like, he's a deviant. And for Ooh. those of you who remember, he was the deviant Michael Hunter Yeah, back in the Firestorm era. So and, it was one of those little, and Corey was there for Firestorm, wasn't yes, he? Yes, he was. Yeah. yeah. So that was one of those wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And I, uh, I, I remember thinking like, God, I love that. I love that, you know, sneak that in. Firestorm was a promotion in the Cleveland area. Yep. And uh, who ran that? I don't know. They ran out of a, it was out of a, a concert hall. Like the Agora or the Peabody or something. Peabody. Peabody yeah. was where it ran out of. And that, I remember they had, I mean, they had a, a pretty good row, EC3, yeah. uh, again. McChesney. Uh, McChesney. Yeah, they had a really good uh, yeah. collection of talent. Uh, uh, Shane Rock. Taylor. Shane Taylor. Yeah. Um, it's the current first... current Ring of Honor uh, television champion. That's right. I think it's the first time I saw uh, like images from those shows. Was the first time I saw like yeah, uh, uh, I, I guess gang rag uh, Ray Rowe. Yes, when he started coming out in the handkerchief and the hat and everything. Because I, I mean, we knew Cleveland Mafia Ray Rowe up mm-hmm. here, where they're just like coming out in in Browns colors because we're in Pittsburgh and uh, dropping people <laughs> on their heads. I did, <laughs> yes, and dropping people on their heads. It was a good time. That's what that's what got me into indie wrestling. That and watching Mitchell get the shit chopped out of him on uh, on uh, cable TV. Um, but uh, anyways, so. NXT, AEW, it makes sense. I mean, if anything is going to compete with that, you don't put SmackDown up against AEW, that's for sure. There's no competition there. Well, I mean, SmackDown is going to be on Fridays now. It's going to be on Fridays, but I'm I'm saying you don't put, like, the main product. Like, if anything's comparable to an AEW, it's that NXT product. What do you think about the fact that they used Evolve as their counter-programming? To fight, I mean, like, what what is the, what? But what does that say? I think that's I think it's testing a couple of things. That's this is happening. Hey, we got this evolved thing in this relationship, and and, and I feel like they were on the doorstep of doing something like that, anyways. I mean, it's yeah. not like evolves. Temp- Doesn't hurt that this was some of the you know that evolve is the cutting edge. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and that it has that same sort of underground appeal. Yes. So. But I mean, also, it didn't have uh, a few thousand fans like the other, you know, quote, flipping the channel to the other guys had, you know, that's true. so it didn't look as great, but it had they had, both they both had their unique charms. So, yes. To the show, like like the amphitheater look for AEW was really cool. Mm-hmm. And it was nice to see like an indie show feel for something on the WWE network. One mm-hmm. thing I, I really liked about the AEW show was that, and, and uh, this has been brought up on other podcasts and other things is that AEW's arenas all look different. Mm-hmm. Like you, you so can, far, so far you're right. I mean, and yeah. you're right. Once they go to TV, they may go. Uniform. And again, we're talking about a pay-per-view, a show at a gaming convention mm-hmm. and yeah, a essentially three pay-per-views and basically a benefit show. 
right? Yeah. So, I mean, that is, you know, the, but they, they kind of dictated But I mean, go. if I put a gun to your head and an average episode of Raw and said, tell me what city they're in, and you couldn't nope. look at it, nobody could figure it out. Nope. I, I, I could. You could? Uh, based and I mean I'm not I'm not even more more often than not. What I, I also, what do you? I also watch I also watch a lot of arenas. I understand this, but what in the <laughs> arena tells you that? Uh, the stands a lot of times, how the stands are situated. Like, especially if you show me old Raws from like back in the day, I can tell you. Old what. Raws are different. I mean, old Raws I can tell when they're mm. in smaller arenas and when they're in bigger arenas. The set but wasn't what, as big. They didn't cover up as much. Yeah, you know, I mean, like not older every, Raws you can you it, can sort of tell. Yeah, now every 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 arena has that that ring that LED ring around that they put the logo up on. Right. Sometimes that's different. And you get like two of them or one of them or, or, or some that are. Incomplete. And I mean, and I'm mad, Mike, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. I mean, obviously, you've seen a lot more tape mm. uh, just based on on what you've had to do. I'm saying for the average, the uninitiated. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. But but that's also the nature of the beast, too. They want everything to look uniform. But is that a good thing? Is that like whereas AEW makes you feel like you're kind of traveling around the world, mm -hmm. and like New Japan has that appeal as well. You know when you're in Cork and Hall. You know when you're right. in the Tokyo Dome. Right. You true. know when you're in, in Sumo Hall. You can tell those buildings are all different. They all have their own. They also some of those they don't have sets. It's, it's no absolutely. It's, you're coming out of the you're coming out of the locker room from from the door yeah, to the yeah. to the ring. It's very like in, in gymnasium. Show. Yeah, yeah in very gymnasium. much. But, but the other the other companies you're mentioning don't have corporate sponsorships to answer to. They don't have shareholders to answer to. Mm. So I mean, there has to be a certain kind of level of not professionalism, but like. I think New Japan. There's a certain standard be, that they've established over the years. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think New Japan may be one that does. I mean, New uh, Japan answers but, to it because they put it on the mat. Yeah, they put their yeah. sponsors on the mat yeah. and on the corners. Yeah, and uh, you it, know, but I I don't think there's that expectation for them like there is for shows over here. No, yeah. there yeah. isn't. Yeah, no, I agree. But I mean, I'm just saying personally, I like that. Mm -hmm. I, I like that it that you can that the shows feel different, that they feel unique. And that each show, I mean, do you remember when, um, oh God, what was the, what was the name of the nightclub that Nitro used to run at with the pool? Uh, Panama city. Yeah. But that was a city. What was the yeah. name of the nightclub that wow. they, they put the ring in the middle of the pool. Does Ooh. everyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I, I, oh, we we don't remember, I don't remember the name of the club, but did they mention it on the, Oh yeah. They middle. absolutely like, like they, they said, yeah. you know, like the flamingo club. No. No, but I mean, like, no, I know what you're talking about, though. But that was like, like you looked forward to that. Oh, we're going to spring break. The the uh, ring will be in the pool. Someone's going in the pool. Yeah, and you it know, was always Scott Hall because he was drunk. Well, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Got to cool him <laughs> off, guys. Got to cool him <laughs> off. These are baseball field shows that I'm seeing here. Uh, best and worst of Raw spring break. Da -da 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 -da. Nope, not saying there. Not saying there. Uh, spring break episodes of Panasonic Beach, Florida, or no, that's not telling me either. I'm trying to find it. Anyways, and Jennifer Carlin's going back to HGTV. I think I think uh, Finn Balor has already been out. Uh, so, and it, apparently we're getting sweater Bray tonight too. Yeah, apparently there was another episode of Firefly Funhouse. Oh, it was an episode. Club La Vella. La Vella. That's it. Thank you. You're you're absolutely right. Club La Vella, and it was Spring Breakers, and the the ring was in the middle of the pool, which. One of the greatest squashes of all time in the first time they were at Club Lavella, um, uh, Kevin Sullivan didn't beat him into the pool. He beat the jobber into the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> he like whooped his ass the entire way down the hallway, down to the beach, and threw his ass in the Atlantic Ocean. Those are cool. Like I always love that with Nitro. Like they, you know, they start off with Mall of and America. Years later, that man emerged as the sea monster in. <laughs> <laughs> but they did they did the purple haze has returned to me <laughs> they did that they did like yeah mgm studios and disney right? sure yeah, yeah. like they, like they had that different feel to them like but also they weren't like at that level to be like selling out ten thousand. or yeah i i wonder if aew will continue that trend when they have to run weekly shows, i can't so. imagine it, I, I i think the word is aren't, weren't they going to do tapings in vegas or something i'm surprised that they have not announced any kind of ticket sales yeah and we're and if they're going to go on t wait a minute they're going to go on tv in october october mm -hmm. yeah it's like, almost August. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. You can't wait until uh, All Out to announce these shows. Yeah, 
actually, I think you can because wherever wherever they do these tapings, based on the history of their but tickets Sorg, so far, Sorg, they're supposed to be live. Are they? Okay, yeah. that's what they've said. Mm-hmm. They're so gonna be live. You're, every not, week. you're not just a, you're not pulling a TNA on this. You're not announcing one venue and taping four weeks of shows. Wherever you're, they do you it, should be announcing. Where, but wherever they do it, I think they are very confident they're going to sell out whatever they have. And these may be small venues to begin with. They may very well be. Mm-hmm. Who knows? You, I mean, do you think that? Do you think I still gonna, think gonna, they should be announcing them. Do you think they're going to aim stage AE level? Or do you think they're going to aim, you know, no, AJ Palumbo level? I'm uh, thinking AJ, AJ Palumbo Pal- level. They're, I mean, they're not going to. I I can't see these guys dropping into a PPG arena. I, I can see them doing like a Hammerstein or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they're going to do. They're going to go mid level arenas and yeah. In, in now, the now, but, but I mean, like, okay, you start there. In New York, you could do Madison oh, Square yeah. Garden. Like, if you wanted to, in Ooh, New York, you could do MSG. I don't know. The Garden is hard to sell out. Mm. I mean, but I, no, be, just because of the pricing, mm-hmm. because of the pricing, not because of the quality of the product or anything, the pricing, because of what you have to list those tickets as mm-hmm. it's hard to sell out. You might be right. But the, but the fact of the matter is, is in that market, you probably could. I don't think you do TV there. That's a pay-per-view. Sure. I mean, yeah. I, I agree in the same thing You're in not, Chicago. And yeah. the, I mean, Vegas, Vegas is different. Vegas is an easy fly in for a lot of people, mm-hmm. you know, um, a lot of people drive there from L.A. Sure. Yeah. What is it like a three, four hour four drive hour, Four hour, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it's not unheard of. Um, I mean, that's, AEW that's... has connections all throughout California. Oh, yeah. You know, SoCal anyway. So mm-hmm. and all uh, through Florida. And you know, with, the, with and then and then I mean, yeah, they might just have it in Jacksonville. Jacksonville might just be the Atlanta. And of Jacksonville AEW. might be one of those things where it's like it's free to run at the buildings that the cons own. Yeah. So if it's a That's building true. that the cons own, it it makes sense that you'll be there every three months. We spent all this money on talent. Let's save a couple bucks here. Yeah. You know, I, I, but it seems like they're throwing the 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 pocketbook at a lot of this stuff so far. So. Uh, but yeah. they haven't been ex- they, they haven't been wasteful. No. There, there hasn't been anything where I was like, "What the fuck?" So and also and and this is this is fascinating too because this is still, um, and this is this is still all. Uh, sorry, I got a notice from promoters. Please stop messaging me during my show. <laughs> uh, but uh, wait, 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 wait. Is it a promoter I know? Oh, yes. Of it's, course. It's one that you're going to be working for very soon. Dombrowski, get off the... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Joe's the one. Joe's the one that does it. He's the only one that does it. But I swear... Really? I, 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 I would have bet Sorry, dollars to donut it would have been Dombrowski. It's the only time he knows you're paying all attention to your screen. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Fair enough. That That's is true. That is true. Uh, it's going to pop up on one of the screens around here, right? So... Like, um, at this point, you're like the architect in the fucking Matrix. You're looking hello. at everything. Hello, Neo. <laughs> I created, I created the Indie Wrestling. I created Sorgatron Media. <laughs> oh, know, apparently, this is the third iteration of the wrestling. Apparently, network, apparently, yeah. at some point, I mislabeled Aaron Draven as Bill Collier on his intro. Yeah, and, wow, uh, that, that, that's a, <laughs> that's not even close. Yeah, <laughs> whoops. Uh, it, anyways, two feet and four hundred pounds. <laughs> Uh, we'll we'll fix those on Saturday. Okay. Uh, anyways, we'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. Well, this was a post, but uh, yeah, well, we'll new post, issue, post reissue, post. fix it in post. Post. It happens. It happens. Uh, but uh, what the hell are we getting at here? Um, no, it, it's it, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. I'm it, surprised. I'm looking. Good, hold on. That's a good bump for NXT. Let me jump off on this. I'm surprised how many people in the chat room said they've been to Club Lavella. Is this still exist? <laughs> That was 98. <laughs> Do you know how many things from 98 are no longer in existence? Oh, yeah, I used to hang out at I used to hang out at Matrix. Matrix is a parking lot and then it became a new housing complex. Yeah. All right? Like oh, you yeah. can have a Matrix there too. We had a Matrix up here. No, we had a Matrix down here. That was where all the workers oh. would go to get annihilated. Oh wait. <laughs> wait. Hold on. Is Matrix on like this I think I've been there. When did it close? Uh, oh, years ago. Years ago. Almost a no, decade ago. Yeah, but he might have been here a no, decade ago. No, I think I went there with Doc had Remedy, four, Chad the Shadden. Yeah. It, it, it had like four rooms. It yeah, had okay, really, yeah, cheap, yeah. That's really where, cheap cover. That's where I met Screech. Yes. Okay. You know, I who, I, you know, who, you know who I met, you know I met at Matrix? Uh, I've SoCal definitely Val. been there. Oh yeah, SoCal Val. <laughs> yeah, I met her at Matrix. Okay. So, and I remember it was the cheapest. Like, 
Dixie cup, like this big uh, mixed drinks, but they were like a buck. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. Yep. Like, I remember this. Yeah. They, okay. It's the first place I think I saw an oxygen bar. Oh yeah, I remember that. Oh, oh and I remember Jimmy. Have you ever done? Wait, wait, hold on. I got no, a, no. I got a story real quick, and I know this may send the, the 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 mayhem show on a complete loop. I was there with Jimmy DeMarco. Oh, and Jimmy was annihilated, mm-hmm. and he's telling me about how he wants to do this three match series with the devil. <laughs> okay, I think I've heard this story. So he's telling us about how like the first match. Will be held on Earth. Mm-hmm. Will be which mm-hmm. would be Jimmy's home turf. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Notorious Norm was going to turn on him, and Nor- the devil no- would win. Norm so Con- promoter Norm Connors. So he would have to go to hell, and he would have to win against the devil in hell to have a yeah. chance to go to a third match. But he was going to pull some move and beat the devil in hell, which means third match, neutral ground, the moon. <laughs> Isn't this just the plot of Bill and Ted's bogus journey? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I, but I just remember I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm green as grass and I'm annihilated. And I'm just sitting there fascinated as Jimmy DeMarco tells me this like three match storyline about how he's going to wrestle the devil on the moon. And I'm just like, yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Solid booking. Solid, solid booking. Solid booking. I'll have another shot of tequila. <laughs> fantastic well um i think it's a good note as we're preparing for our wednesday night wars in uh, uh matt mike's gonna work on his uh voice box over there mm-hmm. uh we're gonna talk about a lot of indie wrestling but of course if you are looking for the best in indie wrestling in pittsburgh in the pittsburgh area look no further than indie wrestling dot us got it hey i'll put over indie wrestling dot us they have a uh, great collection of talent, great collection of uh, organizations that they work for. I have very, very, very much enjoyed uh, not only your stuff on the Indie Wrestling uh, Network, but I'll plug the Indie Wrestling YouTube page, oh, yeah? which has given me uh, such highlights of my career <laughs> as being tapped out by Jonathan Gresham, being okay. annihilated by the Titan Dennis Jackson, and being dropped on my head by Anthony Henry in a vertebraker that almost realigned my spine. Thank you, Sorg. <laughs> For putting those highlights on my career. You couldn't have one where I fucking win. Something like, hey, super kick, one, two, three. No, none of those matches are on fucking the indie wrestling well, YouTube. You, know, you might have to dig for those a oh, little okay. bit. Oh, okay. I'll go know, fuck off. The- <laughs> a two a time super everything. indie wrestling, super indie champions. They're should around there somewhere. somewhere. We got some super indies hey, in put there. Put up the fucking match where I win the premier title. One of my four heavyweight titles. Oh, that's Joe Dombrowski. So, I mean, oh, there's okay. only so much. Excuse I mean, me. you know. Kidding aside, uh, <laughs> IndieWrestling.us Network, a uh, great collection of talent. Tons of future superstars you can find on there. We got a lot going on there. Like I said, on, on the .us, you can find everything. Revenge Pro is on there on VOD, Angel Gate, Fight Society, and on the Indie Wrestling Network, you can get RWA Rise with a Y, Uprise, Prospect Pro Wrestling. Uprise which, with a Y. Uprise with a Y. But I, there's no competition. I, but I swear, if Kevin Hervey comes out with an Uprise, I'm done. Uh, so, it, 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 and uh, uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling uh, and New Rise, both shows from this past Saturday night, already up there on IndieWrestling.network for you guys subscribing. You can check out with a seven-day free trial for new subscribers as well. Uh, you can watch the first Prospect Pro Wrestling show for free, no sign-up required. The first Uprise is on there, uh, free, no sign-up requ- required, and you can dig in. And also... Episode 3 of Breakfast with Champions with Jack Pollock, uh, at the time IWC champion, uh, David Lawless, uh, at the time KSWA champion, and uh, Rise Grand Championship champion. Uh, I'm doing my titles and my I know, it's editing. okay, you, you got uh, it. Matt Connard, all uh, over some breakfast uh, talking about. And this one we talked about, they talked about the fans, they talked about working with a lot of the um uh, uh, bigger talents like Jack Swagger and, mm-hmm. and meeting a lot of the legends at some of those shows, uh, and uh, and a lot, a lot of good stuff there. And also, and we kind of announced it last night, there will be another um, show that's not entirely a ripoff of something on WWE Network. Um, we are going to have a women's roundtable that we'll be recording here this week. That'll be coming soon. Um, have I trained any of the women in that women's roundtable? I, be- I believe you have, because it's going to okay. be Waffles with Women. Wrestlers. <laughs> the, the Are you okay? You look like you just swallowed a canary. Like, 
<laughs> I was 50-50 on the title, then everybody got really excited about waffles. So uh, I like waffles. Everybody loves waffles. Who doesn't love and, waffles? Yeah. I mean, we, okay, all right. Waffles or pancakes, Sorg? Waffles or pancakes? I just waffles are too complicated. I'm just gonna go pancakes. Mike? Mm, waffles. I go waffles. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 It's pancakes a treat. are too pancakes are too like you can't you you can you can have one waffle, you can't just have one pancake. Now, I'm from, listen, in the Sorg household, our pancakes were a plate big. We didn't make the little bullshit pancakes that you get in that Eaton Park. Or, Sorg, they're called silver dollar pancakes. All right, show the proper, show the proper, mm. know the lore. Know the lore, Sorg. Well, the point is we're going to have uh, Katie Arquette, Jinx, and Honey Badger around the table with some waffles and I'll see what conversation I happens Train two-thirds of that, that. round table. <laughs> Sorg, you you know, I, I, so, and I, one I, of the I, questions I, will be, tell us what you think about Chris LaRusso. Yeah, fuck him. Uh, although I will say one thing. I, I don't know how many shows that you have the rights to that I had students of mine on this past weekend. This past weekend? This past weekend. Uh, uh, or at well, least two of them. Yeah, at least two. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it was one of those things someone pointed out to me that I think I had students on – uh, Prospect, Prospect Pro, Rise. Uh, Rise, Imagine, um, KSWA. Um, God, I, I mean, and I and I had people. Oh, and uh, Dropkick Diabetes. Wow. So, so I had people on five shows. Listen, Chris, we can't do it all. We can't. We can't, <laughs> we can't follow them all. We, I mean, have you seen this list? <laughs> no, I and I understand, uh, but at least uh, in, on the Sorgatron Network. So, <laughs> people still like Rev. Rev was at Prospect saying that I'm going to kill him, and it's going to be filmed on by Sorgatron Media into the camera. It was like, guys, it's a mat. It's 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 indie wrestling. It's Sidekick Media. So, Brand it right, assholes. I know. I know. IndieWrestling.us. There you go. Go check it out. IndieWrestling.network. Thank you for that. Well, speaking of stuff going on there, of course, this weekend uh, you will be involved with Revenge Pro, but a lot has happened with you. You are, of all people, teaming with... I got to see the, at least the start of this happening, <laughs> I think. Jock Samson. Yep. Hence Cowboy Chris. I've been seeing a lot of pictures Well, okay, of- so here were the, here, here's, here's where Cowboy Chris comes from. All right, the options were Jock becomes royalty oh, or I become a cowboy. Okay. I want you to tell me which of those two things is more likely to happen. Yeah. I mean, like, as much as I would love to see Jock in a crown with a scepter... Um. Oh, it could have been like when Hacksaw was uh, king was for a king while. For king yeah, for a while. Yeah, I like that. Uh, but um, uh, I will say that teaming with Jock Sampson has been a blast. Uh, he has been uh the second or third partner I've had in the past couple of years. Uh, obviously I got to rep uh Iron City Icons here for a second. Jack Pollock, who's been a partner of mine in the past, but Jock has been awesome. Uh, to team with. Uh, Jock has a great mind and a great outlook for tag team wrestling. And I think that's part of him just being straight up old school. So teaming with him has been a blast. Uh, we've got to give a, a, a fresh coat of paint and a new look to uh, Sheriff Dan Murphy. There you go. Sheriff Dan Murphy? Sheriff, really? Sheriff Dan Murphy and... Officer uh, Dan Murphy and other places. And uh, the gavel, David Lawless, which, uh, you know what? Look at look at look at look at that look. Look at that. I'm about to kick some ass. Look, he's got going over there. Yeah. I mean, team with Jock's been a blast. He's uh, Jock's got a great mind for this. And um, I think a lot of people underestimate Jock. I think they assume that, you know, it's just uh, it's all laughs. But Jock's got a great mind for wrestling. He's been a really, really fun to work with. And uh, really, really fun to drink with afterwards. So, um, <laughs> I mean, there's a shot of uh, uh, the gavel and uh, and Sheriff Dan Murphy. Apparently. Look at that! Look at that! That's gorgeous. That's amazing. <laughs> Some yeah. great stuff from shooting the Indies. Yeah. Shoot it! I tell you what, let's give a shout out to shooting the Indies. They oh, have done a fucking phenomenal. The stuff job. I've seen from them the last couple. Of months oh have been my great. god! He, that I mean, I'm sorry, dude. I, I I wish I could remember your name off the top of my head, but I know I just know shooting the Indies. Mm-hmm. But oh my god, he's done On amazing brand. work. On I mean, like, <laughs> mwah, fucking perfect. And there's a, there's one with the icy light as as a. Hey, that wasn't my call. All right, that was <laughs> that was what Jock had. Uh, that was what Jock had on ice. 
and I'm not going to say no. <laughs> that, would, that, that would be downright rude. Um, but yeah, uh, me and Jock will be back uh, at Cage Fury defending the IWC Tag Team titles. And uh, after we... And that's against the main event, uh, correct? Yep. And after we take care of the main event one more time, we will move on to uh, High Stakes 3 at the Wheeling Island Casino in September. And uh, September... God damn it, now I have to actually look. Wish I, I should have had this stuff off the top of my head. September 13th uh, at the Wheeling Island Casino in Wheeling, West Virginia. Uh, those shows are always a blast. Mm -hmm. If you have the opportunity to come out, please absolutely do. Uh, we got Kevin Nash in the house. At least three title matches that night. Uh, we will have uh, the IWC heavyweight title defended, whether it be Jackson Argos or John McChesney, whoever escapes uh, Cage Fury with the heavyweight title, will be defending their title in Wheeling. Uh, and plus, after the show, opportunity to uh, uh, go to the bar, have a couple drinks, <laughs> play a little blackjack. Well, knowing how that is in revenge. <laughs> I, I will say, okay, let's 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 steer it back to revenge. Mm -hmm. Some of the most fun I have had in my 15, yes, I said 15, Jesus Christ, 15 years in professional wrestling have been at the Avalon Hotel. My God. I mean, so, so with and the, let, let's, let's the call it. The wrestling show happens there, but then there's a bar in the hotel. Yes. And most people are staying at the hotel that night. Yeah, I and do. And that is, we do too. And that has been, uh, the ladies went up without me since I was in Nebraska last time. Oh, goodness. And the stories I heard and, Trust, the, dr and the drunk trusting, messages I got. Trusting soul to leave the ladies alone in the at the Avalon. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking! I don't know if you realize this. John McChesney is the mayor of Erie, Pennsylvania. Oh yes, John McChesney. And, and look, I've had some wars with that man. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple of beers with that guy. That man owns Erie, Pennsylvania. All right. Like I, I honestly think he could, he could, he could skip out on a murder. In Erie, Pennsylvania, he just know he knows everybody. Every time he shows up, everyone in the bar is like, "John McChesney's here. Fucking get him a margarita." And uh, but you know, it's not all fun and games. Some of the best wrestling action is happening uh, at the Avalon as well. He's he's they put on amazing matches. Uh, I got to give a shout out to Omega Aaron Draven, who's also uh, who is there. not Bill Collier. He is not Bill Collier. <laughs> Again, two feet and about 100 pounds. Uh, but it, it, uh, Revenge is actually uh, has this interesting aspect where you're getting people from worlds where uh, you wouldn't otherwise see them cross. You have some of the upstate New York crew. Uh, you have some of the Cleveland crew. You have some of the Pittsburgh crew. And you get to see some matchups and some uh, interaction that you normally wouldn't get. So uh, Revenge not only gives you uh, great after wrestling action, uh, it has some of the most solid, well-rounded cards uh, in within about 500 miles. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other great thing is the Avalon Hotel does a good deal. So if you want to go up, you know, check out the show, PB Smooth there. Uh, With Colin Delaney. Colin Delaney. I got to give some props to Colin Delaney, another guy who I've gotten the opportunity to uh, meet in the ring, not only at uh, Black Diamond, but Ring of Honor. Um, you know, Collins second to none, and you get to see like I don't. I think this is a first time matchup, Colin and mm -hmm. uh, PB. So you get you get to see some uh, matchups you normally don't get to see. Um, absolutely, it's a blast. Uh, the shows are excellent. The after party is excellent. The venue's excellent. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Avalon Hotel is excellent and very understanding. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. uh, yeah, there. They, I can I can I tell you a quick? Sure. All right. Oh boy. So, oh no! Is this no, 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 no! <laughs> just, just just one of the most terrifying uh, waking up moments I've ever had in my life. Oh no! Um, oh, no. I oh, was. No, I feel uh, like this involves an asshole. No. Well. <laughs> <laughs> eh. So. Uh, I am very much a the bars are closed. Get back to the hotel room. Yeah, that's me. I mean, like, oh, and that does not happen. Oh. No, not all, but, but that's me. Like, yeah, I, I, like once they're like, all right, last call. I'm back in the room. Yeah, I'm not an after party guy. I'm not an all hours of the night in the hotel room guy. I'm out. 
So I get back to my room. I pass out. Somehow, Jackson Argos talks the front <laughs> desk clerk into giving them a key to my room. He's like, no, I'm staying with them. I'm like, no, I got my own room for a reason. There are no roommates. Oh, my roommate. Oh, like, and they gave they gave Jackson Argos a key to my fucking room. <laughs> Well, I mean, he so I so so I hear like a a, a cluck cluck, and I'm barely conscious, and Wardlow's standing above me <laughs> as I'm asleep. <laughs> you want to know a terrifying way to wake up? Wrestling him was scary enough. Now he's like, ah, God. Oh, God. Oh, and, and then I believe after I like got my senses about me, my next sentence was, "Get the fuck out." That is amazing. No, no. Yeah, I've heard the everybody coming back at like three in the morning <laughs> through the hallways up there. So um, it's a good Get time. Get the fuck out. Fans, wrestlers, camera crew alike will be all there. And uh, my drinking, this is my first time going to be up there since my drinking ban is up. So why is your why why did you give up the drinking ban? Uh, well, well, it was just time to give up the drinking ban. Oh, okay. So that, well, that's, that's that's not your there. there <laughs> fucking but, good enough for me. But now that's that's gonna be fun. Um, and Dutters has promised that we're gonna have a good time. I don't know what that means. Uh, so <laughs> wait a minute, Dutters I, is gonna be up there. I, yes, I, I oh, believe goodness. that. I believe that means you're going to see a press tam sork. No, we want. We're not in the studio. <laughs> I I don't think it matters. There are, win- there are windows in Erie. There, <laughs> Revenge <laughs> Pro this Saturday. The title. There are windows in Erie. Hey, l- l- I mean, uh, kidding aside, let's. Uh, uh, Revenge Pro is going to uh, crown their first heavyweight champion this Saturday. That's right. Uh, should be a hell of a uh, hell of a show. And you are myself. Ca- you're captaining a team. Captaining a team. Save your survivors. Myself, Team Storm, uh, Katie Arquette, and the Man Dime, Elijah Deem. Uh, will be uh, At least wiping out. Most of your team has been in the chat room. Oh, well, excellent. Throughout the night. Hey, solidarity. Yeah, mm-hmm. There you go. That, that, and that, shows, that shows good team synergy. Mm-hmm. Um, we've, uh, we're, I think it's going to be uh, a, a 5 nothing sweep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I have had a hand in training most of the people on my team, at least a little bit. There you go. Um, and I, I have absolute confidence that it will be a dominant uh, overwhelming victory, and then we'll uh, we'll hit the party bus and party around Erie. A celebration of the night. So go check that out. And there's going to be a lot of great talent there. Uh, so go check that out. And of course, that'll be available shortly at IndieWrestling.us on VOD. So uh, it's nice to know, Sorg, you do have a lawyer on speed dial. Uh, well, you got two. I, I got two. One being the gap. Yeah, a couple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow Sorg's you, very li- Sorg's very litigious. You, you, well, uh, that's, <laughs> that's more my wife. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and on that, Can I note, go get a beer. <laughs> go get another beer, Chris. While I oh plug my god, good I need, I need grab a breather. A, grab a slice of pizza. Oh, I broke Chris. Good. Grab a slice of pizza over there uh, from our friends at Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh. <laughs> He's on the floor. <laughs> yes. For a Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect Pep Ryan Pizza, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, mm. PNC Park. If you are uh, one of the many people that are not here in Pittsburgh, please go <laughs> take a picture of a Broadway in your neighborhood. Tweet at PGH underscore Slice on Twitter and uh, and let them know you want to Slice on your Broadway. Uh, thank you so much for them supporting the show here and of course uh, uh we will be right back with the big question chris larusso is going to have a beer and recover and uh after this message sidekick media services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com so we were just kind of talking off air a little bit of raw reunion some quick thoughts on that and of course uh we we kind of went <laughs> off about it on the monday Mayhem wrap up if you want to check that out. But Chris, you had some. I, well, you didn't. You said you didn't watch it yet. Uh, I no, I haven't watched the wrap up. Okay, I haven't oh, watched oh. the wrap up. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I tend to agree. I think that this was an opportunity where you could have, um, you could have given some of your current stars and some of your current uh, week in week out uh, performers a nice shot in the arm, mm-hmm. and. Um, for whatever reason, they are not willing to. Uh, they're not willing to, to put those eggs in those baskets. 
And I, I don't know why. Because mm -hmm. truth be told, I think that the the main roster is so talented, especially the raw roster right now is so talented. And, uh, you know, you, you could really get behind these guys. But for whatever reason, and again, I think the exception was, you know, Bray Wyatt laying out Mick Foley. Um, you, you didn't really see that. You saw your, you know, you, you saw the legends paraded out and, you know, uh, a, a lot of member berries, a mm -hmm. lot of, a lot of member berries. Mm -hmm. And that's great. You know, I member, but, <laughs> uh, you member Rikishi? I member, I member. <laughs> but, uh, is he going to be here next week? Mm -mm. Is Austin? Hogan, unless he can plug his beer again, yeah. it gave me a good opportunity to sh reshare the clip of uh, Jackson Argos getting stink faced. <laughs> oh, I mean that's a so, great. I mean at least you, at least you didn't have that. But it, it becomes an issue where it very much highlights these people are superstars. Mm -hmm. The people you see every week are not. Yeah. Uh, Tina's pointing out that uh, it was their highest rated Raw in the past 11 months. I'm not stunned. It was every but, superstar but that's had to that's... be fair. That's a low bar. Mm -hmm. That's a low bar for them. Like, and, and, and you used every name from the past 20 years mm -hmm. to do that. I mean, if it, it wasn't, took... you had a serious problem. Yeah. I mean, a massive problem. Uh, it, it just it strikes me that. Why not go all in on one of these guys? Okay, may, maybe they make it, maybe they don't. But you got to try. You got It's one of those things, play with the cards you're dealt. All right? Mm -hmm. you, you, well, we wish we had. Well, you don't. Play with the cards you're dealt and go in. If you don't support, if you don't support the guys who are going to be your every play soldiers, we're not going to, the guys are going to be there week in, week out. If you don't make it clear that these guys are your, th what's the meme going around of like Seth Rollins being off to the side while the club and by, by, by DX and the NWO all party together. What a slap in the face to your number one star. Yeah. What a slap in the face to the guy who has been, who has gone and taken the slings and arrows of the internet. This mm -hmm. is the guy yeah. Who He's has, been the one standing up for the entire roster. Who has been company. standing up for the roster against people going like, you're a shill for the company. You're a shill for McMahon. You're a shill. Who has willingly picked up that shield, picked up that sword, and marched into it and said, no, I'm going to put these letters on my back. I am going to be the WWE. I am going to be proud of where I work for. And and like, whether you, you roll your eyes at it or not, you gotta you got to respect the guy for like, no. This is my company. These, you know, this is my roster. And you reward him with being the, you know, fifth wheel. Like, what a slap in the face to a guy who's who's who is subjecting himself and putting his, putting his neck on the line mm -hmm. where he can be the guy who's being ridiculed and being, you know, uh, being put out there. Uh, that whole thing with um, Osprey, you know, it's just like. How do you do that to a guy who who is willing to fight for you? And and I and I don't get it. I I just don't. Yeah, I. It's that it, you know we'd see that when they go from NXT, you know, stardom to you know raw driver over and over again. It's like you know, don't let people do what got them there, right? Mm -hmm. You know, from your Cedrics to everybody else, but. I don't know. Uh, well, a missed opportunity, major missed opportunity with, especially with all those legends there. Yeah. Well, we do have an opportunity for for a big question here in uh, Mad Mike. I think you got this lined up. Oh, I do. Um, so we were talking about earlier about uh, evolve as counter programming to fight for the fallen. Mm -hmm. um, with all out coming up, now a lot of people would say that the NXT UK takeover. Is kind of programming, but it's not. <laughs> it happens earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people were pissed off about that until they saw what time UK takeover aired. Yeah. But I have a feeling we're still going to see something else that night. The big question, if you had your pick, 
what would you counter program against All Out? If I was WWE. So mm-hmm. so we're we're WWE and we're counter programming against All Out. Yep. You can you can take anything you want. You can have another Evolve special. You could do whatever you want. Live net live live network. I think that's where you have if, your I mean, you, you, got, you kind of tease this. Uh, someone, I think somebody in the chat was teasing a brand versus brand thing. I think that's where you have like an NXT versus Evolve thing. You know, Ooh. that's kind of what the Evol- first Evolve show was. It, it was a little, well, it was a kind of a, a NXT bit. versus 205 thing, wasn't it? A little so, bit, yeah. But, uh, uh, but uh, hold on. I Somebody needs a charger. So mm-hmm. I'm just passing this unawkwardly during the middle of a podcast. Uh, <laughs> so I think so I was going to say, if, if you guys had any, if you guys wanted the way I have mine, go ahead, Mike. Um, if it were me Mm -hmm. and the end of August is pretty close to when we're kind of resetting every smack, everything on SmackDown and everything like that. Like we're going to Fox. Yeah. Yeah. We're we get, yeah, we got a big kind of bump up with that. There's a literal series premiere that's going to happen there. Right. Right. And, And, and the push is more towards a sports type of feel. What I would do is WWE draft night. Mm-hmm. You run it like the, you run it like the NBA draft. Mm. You, no, you run it like the NBA draft. Mm-hmm. You have Bischoff and Heyman representing each show. You have a couple of and you the only people that are not eligible for the draft are champions. Whoever your current champions are, they stay on their shows. So you have champions versus champions as the matches and everyone else is up for grabs and you and you pick the whole roster and you can do that in a three-hour show mm-hmm. especially you, if you have go ahead i'm sorry no like especially if you have like ic champ versus us champ you have Raw Tag Team Champions or SmackDown Tag Team Champions. You have WWE Champion versus Universal Champion. Hell, you can even have NXT Champion versus Cruiserweight Champion. Mm-hmm. Like, have everyone on every roster be eligible. Like, if if someone wants to pick someone from UK, they can pick them. Just not Walter. Just not the ta- just not the tag champ. Just not the women's champ. Mm-hmm. Like, make it a real time event. Like mm-hmm. like the first draft used to be, where people did not know where they were going. And yes, it sucks for the performers, but if you really want to shake things up, they should be used to it by now too. They should be used to it. Yeah, that's what you do. You have that. You have WWE draft night. That's what I would do. Okay. Um, I like that. That's uh, as different. It's certainly going to be different than. It's certainly going to be different than uh, what All Out is going to present, which is probably going to be more of a traditional pay per view. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's the appeal of going different, of going, um, you know, you, you, with a different feel, different approach, different mindset. I would go sort of along those same lines, but but a little bit more of the traditional pay per view. I'd do a Clash of the Champions, mm. and I would have. You know, I mean, WWE has. By the way, I love that. Uh, was it WWE would counter program against Clash of the Champions and Starcade, mm-hmm. and now they're using an old WCW property to counter program. I mean, them. you can call it whatever you want. Yeah, but I mean, uh, uh, the Clash of the Champions was always. I mean, Clash of the Champions used to be appointment television, mm-hmm. like the, those. those but big also, specials. that was that was a day when you didn't get brand. Like face name versus name matches on regular television. No, you too. never got like that was like yeah. that was like Saturday Night's main event when you had superstars and wrestling challenge. So mm-hmm. I mean that's a different thing. So what makes this like they tried to do Saturday Night's main event, but it was in the in the in the late two thousands, early twenty tens, I think. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it was just like well, it was just another show, you know. Yeah, there was what? nothing special yeah. about it. Yeah, no. Whereas like uh, in you know the early Saturday Night's main event, you know you would have Hogan versus Orndorff in a cage. Yeah. Yeah. As a Saturday night's main event. Like, yeah. you couldn't miss that. Or you'd have, you know, Savage versus Jake Roberts. Yeah. Like, you can't miss these matches. Yeah. And maybe, you know, that might be an indicator of, like, what is a can't-miss match in WWE right now? 
that's when I think you need to dig into like this Evolve NXT stuff is like, you know, hey, hey, I really like, honestly, like I'm more excited with Tyler Breeze versus the Velvet Team Dream. And I think when you're talking about the people that I'll tell you a match you're that, trying to keep from going to AEW. Mm-hmm. Uh, a match right now that to me would be can't miss. And I mean, I, I know they won't book it. Riddle versus Lesnar. Oh, mm-hmm. geez. Yeah. Yeah. Right like if, there. if you if you booked Riddle versus Lesnar uh-huh. and let Riddle just build it up for a couple weeks mm. and just talk like mad shit on Lesnar. Doesn't he already do that? Like, uh, that? Yes. Yeah. But oh, then, yeah, he does. He does. Absolutely. By the way, uh, Chris uh, had one of Riddle's last. Uh, one of his last indie, uh, indie matches. matches. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was lucky enough to get that with uh, real shoot wrestling. Right? Yep. Yep. And uh, I could just imagine like and you wouldn't even you wouldn't even need a lot of build. Mm-mm. Like, oh, give, no. give me, give me three weeks. Self. Give me three weeks of build. You, Riddle will do the rest on Twitter. You put I the, don't. I don't even think you'd need three weeks. I think you need one NXT promo from Riddle and one Raw promo from Heyman. That's yeah. It. That that's it. And uh, social media, um, Bleacher Report, and Sports Illustrated takes care of the rest. Absolutely. Yeah. And now if you if that if I had to counter program, it's all out. That is the main event. Mm. Of the show I program against all out Brock versus Just Riddle. Just a big mass appeal. I, I'd also throw on there Samoa Joe versus Kevin Owens. I could see that. Mm. I could definitely see that being an undercard match. Mm. To that, because um, they've ne- they've never had a one on one match. Man. So I, I think that, and I think that's maybe the one thing that WWE has that can trump. I mean, they've got Brock, and Brock's the nuclear option right now. Right now, like. If you have an opponent for Brock that people want to see, um, I think it was like the last couple Survivor Series when Brock was having those matches with AJ and with um, uh, Brian. Brian. Like those were great matches, and that made I, I still remember Brock Scott Daniel Bryan up for the F five. <laughs> Good night, everyone, <laughs> and tosses him. Like I remember that. And if you ask me, like, remember something major from a Raw in the past couple months? Mm. Baron Corbin was on a bunch of them. I remember that. <laughs> like, I mean, the the thing is with Brock, is sure he's been back for a while. He's only really wrestled a couple different guys. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of people that you can. There's throw big Brock ma- There's still big matches for Brock. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you know what I'd like to see personally: mm-hmm. Brock versus Big E. I wouldn't. Or I wouldn't, Brock yeah. versus Cesaro. Ooh, like, I'd like that. Ooh. Like, there's a bunch of Matt Tina saying in the chat room, Brock versus Walter. Hi, yes. We'd love that. Or or a rematch, even though people have seen it before, Brock versus Nakamura. I mean, but I mean, uh, only uh, very few people in America have seen that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it wasn't the same Nakamura. No, it was. And it was wasn't the same time. Brock. That's true. And I'll tell you what, you know, there's a lot of matches when you talk about, like, well, people have seen it that, that people haven't seen. Um, we haven't seen the Kings of Wrestling in WWE. You know? Um, th- there was one match. It was a dark, but it was a house show. No, it was on NXT. Oh, really? What? But was it? Was uh, it Network Era NXT? No, Hulu. Okay, well, Hulu, uh, Hulu Era NXT. It was um, it was CM Punk and Seth Rollins versus the Kings of Wrestling. But Whoa. I mean, how much? But I mean, how much could we get out of the Kings of Wrestling? Yeah, especially now that. You know, it looks like Sheamus is kind of uh, pulled, and the bar is no longer a thing. Mm-hmm. Are yeah, you telling me that? Like, are you, are um, you it looks t- like Sheamus is transitioned to being a referee. That's crazy. What? Wait, a referee? That, uh, yeah, no. He posted a tweet today that his hair is growing out, and he was wearing a referee shirt. I he's too high profile to become a referee. I don't That's, know. Does I I, I think it may be the only option. For can him you imagine? Hold on. Neck. Can you imagine the the Kings wrestling versus the Revival? That'd that, be really good. That's good. That I'd would ra- be so good. I'd rather see if I had my druthers, Kings of Wrestling versus the Viking Raiders. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's mm-hmm. another, but I mean, that's another great. Like, okay, you know, what would you like on your pizza? Oh, you know, we could have <laughs> bacon or, or pepperoni. These are both great options. Like, mm-hmm. we're, we're talking about all. Of Do you these... know what pineapple is? Kings what? of Wrestling versus uh, Deuce and Domino. That's pineapple on <laughs> your pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone always wants pineapple on the pizza, and we 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 yeah. judge them and appropriately. Somebody just want to take a deuce. So, do you, uh, do you know why I said deuce and domino? Why? Because pineapples go good with cherry. 
Mute his mic. All right, and uh, well, let's bring around. <laughs> Tina says revival versus Mustache Mountain. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, now that we have a secondary big question, I should probably come. Um, so counter program. Now we're now we're just doing mayhem. May- and, and, and actually inspired <laughs> by yours, um, because there was a question, and I know Mike, you won't like this, but what about? I'm going to give you one of. Well, I don't think the one thing. I don't think we'll get our four horsemen versus four, four horsewomen versus four horsewomen. That's going to be a SummerSlam if it did, and nothing is any close to set up with people oh, where they're I- at. I don't know if Ronda's ever coming back. Well, there's that. Well, I was going to say, depending on the Ronda situation, because there was a thing about her coming back. I think it was just somebody speculating that I read a uh, headline for. But what if you do have a Ronda come back against and bring up Shayna Baszler? See, the thing is, Shayna's ready. Mm-hmm. Jessamine and Marina are not. No, but no, I'm saying. But no, it, no. Okay, I'm saying eight man tag. You don't I'm, say, no, you... no, no, I'm saying Ronda versus Shayna. Oh, that gets attention. Um, see, I think you're gonna run into a because Rhonda doesn't like to be booed. Mm. You put her against Shayna, she's gonna get booed. She is gonna get booed. You throw enough money. Does Rhonda really not like to be booed? She was she was it a heel really during. Seems like it. Well, but I mean, like when she was um, uh, when when she was fighting Misha Tate. She very she embraced the heel role but, against Misha, but that's that's because that's real. She yeah, that, but she that, that's but something, and that's she also she had can, a that's little, something she can control, and she also had a lot of emotional problems around that too. Yeah, like that she's talked about. But I mean, like the the famous one where she she taps out Misha, she rips Misha's arm off. <laughs> Misha goes, "You beat me. Mm-hmm. You 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 won," and offers her a handshake, and Rhonda says no. Yeah, it's like she had no problem being booed. Th- and like she did that. And, and you're like, it's real. Mm-hmm. That's one of those things where like, but hey, I hate you. You beat me fair and square. Mm-hmm. I can see that you're the better person. Mm-hmm. But the and difference w- is she was being pushed in WWE as the good guy. And she was still getting booed. Mm-hmm. Like the second they flipped it from. Ronda going against someone like Charlotte, who was a heel, Nia, who was a heel, Alexa, who was a heel, Natty, who no one gives a shit about. As soon as they flipped it to Sasha, and everyone's like, we love Sasha, we want Sasha to win, that's when it was like, oh, they really don't like me. They just hated the people I was against. Because like, cause that, was, that was Ronda's booking. Like, you put Ronda against Stephanie McMahon, Ronda's going to get cheered. You put Ronda against Alexa Bliss, Ronda's going to get cheered. Nia Jax, Ronda's going to get cheered. Charlotte, Ronda's going to get cheered. Natty, and even they're going to cheer everyone. And, and like, even Charlotte, she didn't have a great, you know, on, on, the, yeah. on the later matches. Didn't have yeah, a great like, match. once the match actually started and Charlotte started beating the shit out of her with a kendo stick and people were chanting, you deserve it, mm-hmm. I think that was when Ronda was realizing... Oh, this, th- th- oh, this is different. I don't mm-hmm. like this. Mm-hmm. And then when, and then because Charlotte wasn't allowed to really like go at Ronda, mm-hmm. Sasha was. Yeah, and boy howdy did Sasha. And then Becky went even harder, mm-hmm. and Becky would not stop going hard at Ronda, mm-hmm. and because Becky knew she was she was fighting a battle of wits with an unarmed person. Yeah, yeah. Oof. Oof. <laughs> but this is one of those things where, like, if and there's a lot of this in wrestling that I've noticed personally. Um, you know, you better have not just thick skin; you better have some armor. Mm-hmm. And coming from somebody who was around during the era of the indie message board, oh, uh, <laughs> let us never speak of it again. Let us never speak of it again. <laughs> but it was one of those things where, like, if you let this bother you, if you let it affect your performance, if you let it affect your day to day life, it's like it'll never stop. Mm-hmm. And, you, and, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, I, I tell my students this. It's like if you w- got into this thinking that you want unconditional love and approval, go be a mascot at Disney World. Like, 
I'm being serious. Like that's a good comparison. If, if, if all you want is for everyone to love you and to respect you unconditionally, go go play Mickey Mouse. Mm-hmm. If you put yourself out there to the public, you put yourself out there to their unreasonable expectations, their unreasonable uh, standards, and you subject yourself to a bunch of people who are just trolls mm-hmm. who want nothing more than to. Want nothing more than to try and hurt someone's feelings and get a reaction, and who and who is just like react, react, react. I'll say the worst thing I can possibly say. I just want to see a reaction. I just want to see you flinch. I just want to see you blink. And then Hank and, Hudson calls you an asshole. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> and there's and there's people like that everywhere. I mean, yeah. not just not just that cunt in the front row at Fight Society. Sorry, you're a cunt if you did it. Um, <laughs> and Hank Hudson was right to call you out. Mm-hmm. You know. And then put a drawstring bag around your head and pull on the cords till you see the face. Okay, of God. but anyways, um, yes. What? Was- what? Am I wrong? I- wait, wait, come on, Sorg. You're gonna cut me off there. Oh boy. But, but I mean, I, I, bringing it back with being a little less attacking. Uh, like if you can't handle that, mm-hmm. if you can't handle that, like God help you if you make it to the next level, mm-hmm. and God help you if you make it to the highest levels. Because it just it be, instead of it becoming the local trolls in Pittsburgh, it becomes the regional trolls in you know whatever company, and then it becomes it, international trolls. It becomes Sam Roberts on the pre-show and the kickoff show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, sorry, Dana Brooke. If you it, like, if you, and I'm not saying it's right, and I'm not saying that those people you know shouldn't be you know fucking dick slapped. They mm-hmm. should be, but. It's a reality when you reach that certain level of fame and acclaim and, and any level of success. Mm-hmm. When you reach a certain level of success, you're going to get haters. You're going to get trolls. And how you deal with them and how you uh, – and like John Cena, God, God oh bless God. John Cena. He took that for a decade and it I'll, rolled I'll, off his shoulders like water off a duck's back. I'll still never forget. The reaction of him walking into ECW one night stand. And he was unflappable. He was, he handled it the best. And it was like fucking Wonder Woman walking through no man's land. Like that's <laughs> exactly what it was like. Like it was just like, you sucks. Like boom, boom, boom. Just deflecting everything off. He takes off his shirt. He throws it in the crowd. They throw it back. He grabs his shirt again. He throws it in the crowd. They throw like. And that didn't sell a goddamn of what you thing. Need to do. Yeah, Never is, sold it once. Nope. Not it, he, if anything, he smiled. He yeah. smiled at it. That was that was the but only kind also, of sell you would give it. That's somebody knowing, like, you know, in the wrestling, get the reaction. Like he got the greatest and, reaction ever. And not only that, not only that, he turned him. Mm-hmm. He turned them too, like because mm-hmm. you could tell there were a lot of legitimate haters for Cena in that building. But by the end of that match, like there were people that were, you know, begrudgingly respected Cena. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, and that, that's, that's one thing about Cena is just like where like people who hate on Cena, it's like at a certain point. You, you feel like an idiot for hating him because it's like, oh, what do you do with your free time? Oh, I visit dying kids uh, in hospitals. <laughs> yeah, how can you hate this guy? Like, and it, it, at a certain point, you got to shut up and go, oh my God, this guy works day in, day out, never snap, like there's n- nothing mm-hmm. at him snapping at a paparazzi, nothing at him like slapping somebody going for an autograph. He visits dying kids in cancer wards and still goes out there and puts on a show mm-hmm. every single time. And it's now on a Nickelodeon show and is going to start doing Fast and Furious movies. Yeah. <laughs> and fuck <laughs> off and he, if you don't like John Cena. And he literally flew in for 10 minutes on Raw to call the Usos out on getting arrested. And then he had to leave because he had to go film other stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, that's something The Rock didn't do. Like, give all the comparisons you want. Rock would participate via satellite. Mm-hmm. Rock via, wouldn't show up, aka via pre-tape. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Even when he was leading in the WrestleManias on the combat comeback yep. a lot. Yep. Yeah. 
Oh, man. And, and Alex Miller is also uh, reminding us of CM Punk versus John Cena in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was another No Man's Land. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Blink. No. Then nope. that that cr- that crowd was was venomous. Didn't blink. Jeez. But yeah, you you have to have like like Ronda Rousey talks about having ice water in her veins and being red for this. I'm like, that's not really true. Like that's that's not really true. You, you talk to Bailey, someone like Bailey. When Bailey starts getting booed mm-hmm. and rolls with it, that's what you need. Mm-hmm. You don't like. The measure of how well you do when the lights are on the brightest are not when people are cheering you and supposed to be cheering you. It's when people are booing you and you're supposed to be getting cheered. That's when you put in your medal as a professional and you figure out how to deal with it. And they, she was so bad at it mm-hmm. to the point where they had to turn her heel. Mm-hmm. They had to bring in her asshole husband <laughs> No, to generate heat, and she had to start hitting security guards because that was the only way that she could get heat. And referees, short, and, re- yeah. short referees, short referees that have short no name. Short referees, guardians. Did, of the a, did he have a name that night? Uh, I mean, I mean, he, I'm sure he had a name. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the, the referee with no name. That yes, <laughs> took a great bump. Oh, he's a veteran. Of course, he's probably think the best Dro- bump they've seen. Drop like a referee. sniper got him from the fucking upper deck. I mean, they, so. they, 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 I mean, I can't imagine that WWE on the regular is getting uh, enhancement talent with like, what is he at? Twenty five years of experience. God, it's got to be. Something <laughs> we're not even like mentioning that, yeah. the name. I realize yeah. like, who we're talking. No, about. no, but wait, everyone, in the, everyone knows who we're talking about. <laughs> 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 And then, and then, of course, the Guardians of the Independence scene. There that, you go. You know, that same night. There you so. go. Uh, I was watching the Batista special, and I, I, I was grinned when they saw that shot, and there's all you guys standing on the ramp. Give <laughs> 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 <Get> the <a> look. <laughs> yeah, and and he made the program. There you go. The program. Yes, it officially had your WrestleMania moment here in Pittsburgh. Whoopee. <clears throat> Whoopee. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the check? Well, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> what? Uh, we're talk- uh, the chat you- room's going some. Interesting no, go ahead. Go. I, I, my phone died, so I, I I can't watch the chat. What's the chat say? Oh, um, Alex is asking how Ronda would have handled one night stand. Mm. <laughs> Gone to the crowd and whoop some ass. <laughs> She like actually, would have fought section 108. That's what would have happened. Okay. She would have, pulled, she would have pulled off the straw hat and the Hawaiian shirt of the guy in the front row. Fuck. Mm. And, and gone no to war. And she probably would have won. Well, <laughs> hey guys, there's a lot of wrestling in Pittsburgh. Did you know that? <laughs> no, no shit. <laughs> and it's so much. It's almost like you, you need to sk- put your calendar together to it. A calendar? God, is it, I wish there was a place where we could know where I all know. the wrestling was. I know. Hey, Chris, have you heard of PittsburghWrestling.com? I have not heard of PittsburghWrestling.com. Tell me all about it, Sorg. Oh, there. You can go to PittsburghWrestling.com if you're in Pittsburgh or if you just want to see what Pittsburgh's doing. And uh, we got a wonderful event calendar going over there. And uh, hey, just looking at August, holy shit, there's a lot of wrestling. Jesus Christ. <laughs> You can go to wrestling every weekend within an hour of Pittsburgh, and and only one overlap, by the way, RWA and KSWA. But look at all that! There you got Northeast Rattle Wrestling, Northeast Wrestling coming up, Rise Wrestling with a Y Saturday, the August third, Fight Society Fridays on the ninth, IWC on the tenth, where you see this guy Chris Larusso uh, defending his championship. Uh, is is a uh, tag team championship? Mm-hmm. I'm, I almost said Route 33. That's not it. There, there it is. No, Holy that's crap! That, that's in September. Rise Wrestling's going up to Springdale on the 17th. Angel Gate on the 24th, which will be live on a pay per view. And on the 31st, you got RWA, which I believe is featuring the Rev, the Rev versus Brother Jordan, and Crazy Steve will be returning. Oh, he was awesome when he was there a couple months ago. Uh, and KSWA. Hey, I got to give a quick shout out. Jo- uh, quick shout out to John Roden. Congratulations Jeez. for winning the RWA. That was title. that that place now, was unglued. I got to give some credit to John Roden. He has been uh, killing it mm-hmm. for over like two and a half, three years now. Uh, has really, really not gotten the credit he deserved. Uh, and it's good to see that RWA has recognized his talent. That man is awesome. I give 
all the credit in the world. Juggernaut John Roden, uh, congratulations to you. And, and look, if if you have not checked this guy out yet, like you have to. This guy there, will be a star. We have right? uh, some full matches and clips over on the Indie Wrestling US uh, YouTube and Facebook. So just look up John Roden over there, and you will see a lot of uh, his match with uh, the Revron Hunt mm-hmm. uh, this past Saturday was great. Uh, you know, a lot of really good stuff, a lot of blood feud stuff with Bronco McBride uh, over the over like a year of matches in our. I will say this: the only time I've ever gotten to share the ring with uh, John Roden was in the 16 bit challenge. Oh. Which, by the way, the 16 bit challenge is is still back in January. Still a hard contender, in my opinion, for match of the year in the Pittsburgh area. Mm-hmm. The 16 bit challenge, I thought, was excellent just because of how many. It was the different most people. well-booked gauntlet slash Royal Rumble-ish matches that I've ever seen. No, and, and I yeah. I completely agree. But you know the fact that it was like Lee Moriarty, John mm-hmm. Roden, myself, uh, Paxson Calloway, the Hurricane, <laughs> the like, Hurricane Shane Helms himself. You know all these people coming into it. Um, and, but that was the only time I've ever gotten to uh, to share the ring with John Roden. And I would hope that someone, someplace, somewhere, would book it one more time because that man is an exceptional talent. Mm-hmm. I I absolutely, you know, he's he's excellent. Okay? So any company would be well, uh, well served to have John Roden on their roster. There you go. Book him. Book him. Uh, he's <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you can check that out. And I am corrected. I, I, I actually do have on my notes. I do need to go check KSWA's uh, because they have an insane amount of wrestling shows. Uh, they also be on August 17th. Brawl Under the Bridge well. just Brawl happened. Brawl Under it. the Bridge. That stuff looks great. I was watching some of the shots from that. My my, I, my uh, colleague and the regulators jumping off of a ladder. What the hell is he thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Gavel, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think J.J. Dillon was there. They do this under, is it in Homestead they do that under the bridge? Dude, they did that during the middle of that heat wave yeah. that we just had. It meanwhile, was 95 in Pittsburgh. Meanwhile, both of my crews went to the air-conditioned shows. <laughs> so at uh, Prospect Pro and Rise Wrestling. I don't know how much it helped because, you know, put 100 people in a room and 90 degrees. 100 brother, people, yeah. Uh, outside, it was just like, oof. Uh, but uh, we, we, we survived. CJ Sensation almost didn't, though. There were there were fans at ringside giving him water during the night because he was the only referee. Oh, he Iron Maned it. Yeah. Oh, good lord. Well, Bo Bo Iron Maned in West Newton the week before. <laughs> listen, listen. Can I can I can we take a moment here, uh, promoters? Get your referee shit covered. But, look, you more can't than one, more than one, guys. please, please. I, especially on a hot days like this, and like, especially if your wrestlers are are better than average. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, like if the action is more than a snail's crawl, like you're, you're gonna you're gonna blow up your referees. I have a story real quick. Um, I remember, God, this was years ago. Um, it was Roderick Strong versus Jay Lethal for the Ring of Honor Heavyweight Title in Baltimore. And they went an hour. Mm. Okay, they well, went. Hell, Gresham and Star went forty-five minutes in IWC a, a couple years ago. A couple years ago, they went an hour. And I remember I went backstage after that match just to say, like I was just on ring crew and visiting, and I um, you know I want to say, oh my god, that was an ama-. and it was it was an excellent match. Um, and I remember I saw Todd Sinclair, the referee. Oh no, and he. He looked like he had just and, gotten and t- a shot. Todd is a heavier guy. Yes. Yeah. And he refereed an hour long match and he looked like he had just jumped in a pool. Like he just laid in with sweat and he didn't miss a beat during that match. And I remember wow. I looked over at him and like I didn't even think when I when I came backstage, I was gonna say to to Jay and Roddy, like, fuck an amazing match. And I looked and I double taked at Todd and I was like Oh my God! I couldn't even think about Todd putting in that full hour. Mm-hmm. Well, you're not supposed over. to, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but not, he did his job. He did his so. job. And I remember I said, "Oh my God, Todd! I can't believe you did that." And you know, uh, just credit to the referees. Mm-hmm. It, and and I I try and tell this to my students, but I'll tell it to everybody out there: good referees worth his weight in gold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's too many bad ones out there. If you got a good one, worth their weight in gold. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it can make or break a match, too. Absolutely. So, and, uh, yeah, no. It, and, and, you know, guys like CJ, you know, they've been around both sides of a... Uh, Potter as well. Potter. Potter. 
a lot of good guys that we're working with. Sean, Rise, Sean Patrick. Sean Patrick, who Sean has Patrick's been in the chat a lot of the night, Joe, and reminding me. Joe is Joe's been excellent. Uh, shout out to Jay Clemens, who Jay Clemens is excellent. was on the Evolve special on yeah. WWE Network. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of friends of the show yeah. out there. Uh, and, and if I, and if I for, forgot your name, sorry. Like you know, <laughs> Bobby of J Town says uh, Todd Sinclair gives me hope that one day I can be a ref. Bobby, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but and also, Rob, cameraman Rob, uh, he Iron Man the uh, the uh, uh, ballpark show in Niles. Oh my no- god, that outdoor show! Oh Jesus, were you there for that one? No, I was in. I was at the. I was outdoors at that motorcycle rally. Oh, that's right. And- <laughs> <laughs> that we the the one we will not sh- we shall not speak of. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. But uh, but uh, Bryce Rensberg as well. Bryce, hey Bryce, uh, an Iron Man as well. Yeah, one yeah. of the best ref in the biz. And good to uh, see him in AEW. Um, but uh, Paul Turner, I want to give shout out to him. Excellent referee as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, also in AEW now. Former okay. Ring of, former Ring of Honor referee now at, at AEW. Oh, okay. Always enjoyed working with him. He was excellent. Um. What the hell was I talking about? Oh, Niles, Ohio. Uh, <laughs> that ballpark show. Saturday night in the middle of that heat wave. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of glad the Monroeville one didn't happen. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe that. Yeah. Like, and, and I mean, we uh that was, uh, I think that that was Wardlow and Wrecking Ball Ligurski. Was that that show? Now in in Niles, somebody yeah, in the chat. I, I saw someone in the chat room confirmed that for me. I saw I, I saw a clip and like I didn't recognize the other guy. Okay, yeah. Um, but all of that in the middle of a ballpark in the blazing sun, and mm-hmm. that was also Dylan Bostic and uh, Billy, Billy Gunn. Gunn. Yeah, like that's unheard of. <laughs> Tina says confirms that I don't miss the Midwest at all. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, geez. He says, I did so much running, <laughs> Rob. <laughs> he was the only cameraman, I believe. They didn't, ta- they I, didn't tag in and out? I, well, like, when I worked that show, it was just me. Like, I thought, oh, I'm one of your cameramen. I was like, no, you're the cameraman. The. I like, yeah. I was like, go set up that camera. And I was like, oh, God, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Sunscreen. It, get out there. Yeah, basically. So, interesting. Uh, give me a sec. I'll give you the whole card, he says. <laughs> Thanks, so, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Hooking us up there. Um, hey, I did have a, one other no, 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 bleh, note. 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 Yeah, sure. News that's item. A, that's a word. So there's a there's a service that there's a whole podcast that talked about one of my um, um, streaming kind of podcasts. Um, and there's this um, new service coming out. I think next year, making a lot of crazy announcements. They're talking about like Steven Spielberg's involved. One of the guys from Radio Nine One One is doing a show. But the idea is they're like fifteen minute shows and series. Like basically, you shoot a movie, you split it up. It's like bite sized stuff. But you pay. It's like a Netflix. It's okay. It's called Quibi. Q U I B I. Um, that sounds filthy. It. I know, right? Well, WWE is getting involved. Oh no! They're gonna do a. They are gonna do a show called "Fight Like a Girl." Mm-hmm. Uh, from w- I've seen, I've heard of this. You've heard yes. of this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the line, uh, the line here in the in the release uh, this is on Deadline.com. In each episode, uh, Stephanie McMahon pairs a WWE star with a young woman struggling with a personal issue that has been holding her back. There we go. Uh, features a uh, quote. Kubi uh, says each episode of the series is shot at the Performance Center, making use of that facility. Features a st- quote stunning transformation and heart pounding reveal as the women change their lives forever. Uh, so there you go. Uh, it, it, it's when I heard of it, it was, I thought it was going to be like a diva show from a little, but I heard from one of the other shows. Um, but it, it sounds like a YouTube series. To mm-hmm. a certain point, right? Or slash reality show, fifteen Sounds like minute a lifetime increment. Series, honestly. And I'm, yeah, I'm, no, I'm not. Does, I'm yeah. not even being like sarcastic about that. Yeah. It's, it sounds like a lifetime series. Tout. <laughs> this is not tout. No, tout was fifteen <laughs> seconds. That's what TikTok is for. Uh, oh, let's see. God, oh, Jesus. Rob just sent me the entire card. Uh, wow. Jake Manning, Brian Pillman was there. Enzo and Cass. Hey, I got let me let me give a quick shout out to Brian Pillman. I got to wrestle him in Imagine Wrestling. My yes. God, is he good? Yeah, dude. Every, Holy shit! Every match I've had a chance to see or film on him has been great. Pillman is out of this world, and you know what? He's doing it his own way too. He's it's he's not just banking off of his father's name. Like 
big ups to Brian Pillman Jr. for for uh, for what he's doing right out there. He'll he'll be a millionaire in this business before it's all said and done. Palace and Argos was it Palace and Argos versus Jerry Lawler and Keith Youngblood? What a team that is! What the hell? <laughs> what is Welcome to that? Else World? Jeez, it's well, it is bizarre land when you cross the border. I know you in West Virginia. Like hanging out with Heel Bradley is kind of weird. I want, no, uh, no, I'm just lulling him into a full sense of security. Oh, okay, okay. Darby Allen and Hale Collins. I don't know how Collins and Bossy with Billy Gunn. Uh, wow, what a show. Um, he said uh, Rob also had really good things to say about Enzo and Cass meeting them. I've, you know what? Uh, some of my... well, also Cass coming out of a depression thing too. So yeah, and that substance been abuse noted. as well. Yeah, as yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't. I from what I've heard, Enzo, we have not had an excuse from. I, uh, I still will not talk yeah. about. Um, I, from what I've heard, a couple of my students were uh, doing the ring crew and doing support staff for that show. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing bad to say about Enzo and Cass. Um, Enzo. Look, he may not have been charged with anything, Mm -hmm. but, you know, if he's partying and doing everything surrounding what he was accused of. He put himself in a position. It's just like, ooh, I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I'm glad that Cass has, uh, is is seeking help Mm -hmm. and is, you know, gotten the support he needed. And telling his story. And telling his story and and helping others, which, which is good. Um. I don't know. That's still pretty toxic, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yep, but people want. If, if your best defense is I wasn't convicted, you still did something wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. If your best defense was they couldn't prove it, that's the O.J. Simpson defense. Mm. Okay. Look, I'm not going to jump on the fucking sword to defend Enzo. So, like, <laughs> there's a reason the Enzo hair is in a drawer. Dumpster. <laughs> not a dumpster, but yeah, we can find new uses for it. Fire pit. Uh, <laughs> I buy one thing off the WWE shop, and it turns out to be for that guy. <sighs> Guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, boy. Chat room, oh. please uh, uh, submit as well. I swear I'll read them this time. Mike, go ahead. I need a second. Uh, okay. Uh, I learned... Um, y- you guys, I I miss Luke Harper. I do, Whoa, too. Oh, yeah. I miss... I, um, I, I saw a match... We this need Big Rig Brody Lee. Hmm? Big, Big Rig Brody Lee. I, I saw a match this week I had been meaning to watch for the longest time and never got around to. Um, the match from Worlds Collide mm-hmm. with him and Dijak. Mm-hmm. Donovan Dijak. It, if, Dijak. If, if you haven't seen that match, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> yes. Go, go out and find that match. As a matter of fact, while you're there, just watch all of Worlds Collide. Yeah, just watch all of them. It's some good they stuff. Were, there's there's some fun stuff. The battle royals are fun. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple people in the men's battle royal that have not to this day still have made TV debuts. Really? Yeah, to this day, um, including one of the final four. Wow! In, in the men's bar, in the men's battle royal. Um, but yeah. Just, just go back and watch the Worlds Collide stuff. If you're, if you're tired of Raw, if you don't want to watch Raw, each Worlds Collide is an hour long. Instead of watching three hours of something you don't want to watch, watch the three Worlds Collide specials. Watch yes. three of them. Hope they continue to do those too over the the, the big shows. And the I'm sure access. they probably will. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those. Um, I wouldn't be. Sub- I don't think they have anything scheduled for SummerSlam. No, but it was, it's a WrestleMania thing, I think, for the most part, right? Oh, uh, well, they did at Rumble, too. Oh, that's right, because they have, like, a fan access around that, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they, I think they have a fan access at pretty much mm. every big event now. The big at, four. At SummerSlam, yeah, I think they're doing yeah. something like that. Okay. There could be. There could be. You never know. I mean, that's something they can drop on the schedule, too. Like, I'd love to see them do one during Survivor Series weekend, where it's mm-hmm. a Survivor Series 205 live team against a Survivor cool. Series NXT team. That'd, That'd be, cool. be like, fun. Oh, yeah. That's actually that's a good idea. I uh, like that a lot. Tina, Tina also mentions uh, uh, the uh, 
Fight Like a Girl show is part of the uh, partnership with Girl Up, a nonprofit, mm -hmm. okay. as well. So it's connected with that. Yep. Um, also, she learned that there needs to be a mayhem road trip for Super J Cup. That's that's a that's a long trip. It's a, well, that's a, that's a West Coast, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's, it's it's in a, it's at least on this continent. That's so, a, that's a let's. Oh, so, so it's a big ass there. continent. I mean, I I mean, I've seen some West Coast wrestling, so that's not that's not new. To How'd me. that work out for you? Uh, well, pretty good actually. Yeah, he I thought got they, 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 under never mind. mind. No, no, there was the Blood Show, but then I went to the Inoki Dojo. Uh, while wow, wrestling tapings and a rise, okay, so it wasn't and a all... rise with an eye pay per view. No, no, no. Okay. This year I got oh. I, I I bumped everything up. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, never oh, mind. It was uh, it was some of the better wrestling I saw this year, and I saw, especially when I went to Tennessee. Okay. Sorg, Sorg, um, Bobby in the chat room learned that he met his favorite wrestler this weekend, T. Croce. T. Croce, but, but did not offer unsolicited duck picks. Ta Sorg, I don't know who that is. No. Uh, <laughs> Is it? Oh, I'm sorry. Ty Cross. Yeah, I still don't know who that is. Yeah, I think he's a Rise Tag I've, Team champion. I have no idea. Yeah. I yeah. I don't who? know him. Hmm? Who? Ty exactly. Cross. I who? don't know him. No. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. No, that's Jim Neidhart. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you. I I, I figured <laughs> out what I learned. Um, I figured out. I learned in wrestling this week that there are a lot of young, hungry wrestlers out there who are absolutely hustling mm -hmm. and really trying to make a name for themselves, whether it be at Prospect Pro or KSWA or Rise or uh, any, Dropkick Diabetes or any of these. There's a lot of talent out there. And, um, you know, I am, I am very proud and uh, very impressed. One of the things I was really worried about with – are we still on? I, I, saw, I saw your – Fiddling with buttons. Oh, I'm just working on your levels. Oh, okay. Um, one of the things I was worried about with this most recent uh, group that came out of the uh, Iron City Wrestling Academy was that, you know, there's not a ton of spots mm -hmm. uh, available, uh, not just in IWC, but across the area. There's, there's a mm -hmm. lot of companies that have very strong, very established rosters. And I am so encouraged and, and so impressed with the fact that a lot of these guys are hustling and wrestling as many places as they can, uh, trying to get their name out there. And, uh, you know, if I started naming names, I'd leave someone out and I'd hurt someone's feelings and I, and I'm not going to do that because I'm impressed with all of them. We need, we need like a Chris LaRusso approved list uh, <laughs> of that, trainees so everybody can follow and know. And know. Like, is there, there has to be something. I've been, I've actually been working on uh, uh, some ideas for like training school kind of listings. Mm -hmm. And that might be something we can work on and talk about. Well, no, there. I mean, and, it, and it's just from the people who, and of all degrees, because now I'm at, I think four classes out mm -hmm. the door, mm -hmm. three or four classes out the door. And they're all killing it. Mm -hmm. They're all killing it. There's no, there's nobody. I, there's nobody who I'm like, oh god, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> Breaking your ass into the business, Ooh. Jesus Christ. There's not, no, there's none I, like and, that. And I have to say, and, and I, I've noticed this the last couple of classes, like every from the um, Jinx KDR kick class on, sure. like I, I, everybody has come out strong. Right, Thank you. has had a character. Thank you, um, and that's on them. That's yeah. not on me. That's so, so like something is right. Like versus like some other some other schools. Like it was like okay, dude, that can wrestle, and he's out there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and at least they're doing that well. But they're like, like we're still developing a character with that person a year later, right? Uh, versus like you know this like. You have, you know, Native American guy. You have Xander Gabriel. What the fuck is going on Xander, there? You have whatever Xander Gabriel is. You have yeah. the man dime. You have a jinx. You have a Katie Arquette. You have, you know, like Jamie Jameson. Like you have yeah. a, the professor. You have the vice principal. Like there's these characters. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I've really enjoyed seeing out of that collection of people. Um, and, and great to be able to see them at uh, the uprises and the prospect pros and, and mm -hmm. you know, finally getting to see some of those guys in person. Mm -hmm. uh, around that and seeing them develop and turn with different people and, and developing things like the board of education lebanon the, dawn's been killing lebanon it. dawn yeah, yeah he's he's been doing well mm -hmm. uh and you know i i take like I, I take minimal credit for a lot of these people did it on their own mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know i they did the hard work 
you know, they, they did the hard part about going in there, training their asses off, developing these characters and then going out there and hustling. Like I didn't get any, I didn't, you know, I didn't twist Marshall Gambino's arm and like, you know, book these guys or no, like they got that on their own. Yeah. And they, they got all of these and guys Mar- who are getting Marshall these like, made that place for guys like that to get a chance. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, he, he didn't have to book those guys, nope. you know, so and, and nobody but a gun to his head. So those any of the opportunities that those guys are getting from the, you know, from the Katie Arquette, Jinx, Jamie Jameson, mm-hmm. all the way up to the most recent Lebanon Dawn. Uh, Vice Principal, uh, Zach Nystrom, Spencer Slade, that whole class. Um, they've all done it on their own. And those guys are all hustling. So props to all of them. Uh, I'm incredibly proud. Uh, I'm glad that they're they're representing themselves well. Mm-hmm. So excellent. Um, we have plenty from the chat room. Uh, Dave Potter learned that Alicia Fox is still amazingly dressed and both a returning legend and an active wrestler. Mm-hmm. Huh. That was a little confusing. She is Schrodinger's superstar. <laughs> Wait. Move yeah. on. All right, all right. Tina, one more thing she learned. There is no fucking room for hate in any kind of wrestling. Amen. Yeah, there was some bullshit going on this weekend. Uh, Bobby FG, not locally, I don't think. No, no, no. no. The, there, was, there was Tennessee or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Wherever that was. Uh, da, 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 da. Bobby wants to see Chris versus the abominable CPA. I'm gonna have words with that gentleman here so shortly. So with the CPA yeah. or with uh, the CPA? Well, no, with that, or with Bobby. Bobby, <laughs> Bobby. Bobby's always on the list. Like, like, like. Next time I see you, Bobby, you're eating a super kick. You and your puppet. All right, mm. and uh, the CPA. If uh, well, I'll, I'll have words with him sooner than later. All right, and Alex so. Miller learned that uh, Priscilla Kelly and Darby Allen are married. I, don't, I, I had to look Good for up them. Who, Congratulations. I had to look up who Priscilla Kelly was. I wasn't familiar she with her. She pulled a tampon out of her Oh, vagina. that's that one. Yes. Makes sense now. By the way, interesting use of a body bag in that <laughs> what match does that with Cody. Mean, Spork? What? What does that mean? I don't know. He's Makes kind of sense a, now. Well, I did watch his match with Cody Rhodes. I mean, that's my only, yeah, that's that's my only kind of... Uh, experience with him. So, Congratulations to Priscilla Kelly and Darby Allen. There you so. go. I learned um, when, Not a goddamn thing. when 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 you have a fans bring the weapons back, <laughs> y'all are sick fucks. When you have a fans bring a pasta weapons match, y'all is really sick fucks. There was there was there were, the thing is when you make weapons with pasta, okay, you got to be so meticulous with that, right? Mm-hmm. Taking individual noodles and attaching them and in the most cases, pushing them in the styrofoam, mm. gluing them to a baseball bat, or or making a face on a mannequin head, uh, on a foam mannequin head kind of thing. I'll say this. You know? um, Caden from, from Cleveland, when he was making some of those deathmatch weapons, mm-hmm. I was like, look, I know this kid is sick, but I didn't realize this kid was that sick. So, you know, to take that level of creativity and then apply it to pasta. Yeah, yeah. Like, ugh. There was some there was some weird some stuff. Some dark shit in that fucking There yeah. was. There were just like what we, like what if we just said fans bring the weapons, you know? I mean, there was that one guy who just wanted to bring a sword in RWA, but um but yeah, yeah. He said like, no. like, wait, 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 like a broadsword? Yeah, he sh- I was outside, you know, probably it was like a warm August show and I'm outside like breathing and this guy walks up in a trench as coat to, as suppose breathing through your gills inside yeah, yeah. the building and uh he walks up to me he's got a trench coat on he was like ah oh, they this is let- dangerous he was just like <laughs> like when they wouldn't let me bring the sword in it was like it, or for the weapons match i was like well that seems like a good idea i was like they wouldn't even let me bring it in i gotta take it back i'm just like he was like see and i'm like well, yeah, this guy just pulled a sword out in the middle of the street. You know, like back in the ECW era, it was things like a canoe, mm. like you know, it was, or it was, a Nintendo. Yeah, it was like creative and fun and exciting. It wasn't like I'm trying to disembowel my opponent. <laughs> Speaking of disemboweling, uh, Lee Moore already brought a knife to a wrestling match. Well, I mean, what the hell? He was going against a grindhouse. So that I'm is not, true. Yeah, I'm not. And, I'm not entirely and I don't even know, shocked. I don't even know what was wrapped around that baseball bat that Noir had. But 
<sighs> wrestling. Um, wrestling. Oh, there's some references to the gathering in there. Smarky is secretly training with Jeff Cobb for revenge from Bobby. Mm-hmm. Snarky the puppet. Snarky the turtle. The one, I mean, the um, one you super kicked. Bobby, oh, Bobby okay. if I were you, I would have Snarky train with the Listen, puppets from the Firefly Funhouse. That's true, too. And also, Chris doesn't remember the faces and names of his puppet victims. No. Man. Chris LaRusso, you will be at Revenge Pro. Revenge Pro this with Saturday. With your team. Absolutely. Tell Save the your survivors. People. We will be at the Avalon Hotel this Saturday, bell time, 7 p.m. And uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, I think that, uh, look, you guys got to check this out. Revenge uh, Pro Wrestling, absolutely the standard bearer in uh, pro wrestling in Erie. One of the best shows you can find within 500 miles. The Avalon Hotel has been a great host to us. Uh, There is a room deal at the Avalon Hotel. Mention Revenge Pro Wrestling, and you will get some kind of discount. I don't know exactly what it is off the top of my head. I'm sorry. (laughs) There is a discount. There is a discount. Make a night. Make a weekend of it. Absolutely. If you are going to, if if you are going to stay in Erie at the Avalon, mention Revenge Pro Wrestling. Not only will you get a discount, but it helps out Revenge Pro Wrestling. I think they get a, a little bit of a. They get a credit for all the uh, rooms that they help sell. Absolutely awesome after party. Absolutely awesome night of action that's already set up there. They're going to crown their first ever heavyweight champion. Uh, Be there. Uh, Drink specials, food specials. It it is uh, a a really good time. And the show itself is a family show. The after party, I can't speak to that. But the show itself is a family (laughs) show. Um, (laughs) Yeah, that's Ain't that the truth? Um, it's like the Wrestling Ma'am show in person. Uh, if you go to, if you subscribe to, again, a lot of clips on the Indie Wrestling.us Facebook mm-hmm. and YouTube page. Also, if you go to Revenge Pro Wrestling on their YouTube subscribe button, uh, they have up a full free match, the three way between John McChesney, Bill Collier, and Wardlow. That's that, an that was an excellent. That match. That was a great match there. So go check that out, and a lot of lot of you can see there. Uh, hey, there's CJ Sensation. Look at that guy. Uh, <laughs> so go check that out. Look at look at that setup there. I mean that that's awesome and uh, a great crew. Like I said, there's there's usually like great crowd people. too. There's usually like four hundred people. Yeah, there, always a, going always out. a really yeah. hot crowd in Erie. It's awesome. So go check. Thank you, Chris Larusso. Check him out on all the social media at Chris Larusso on Twitter, on Facebook, on uh, Instagram, and you can see me. Hold on, I and my phone died, but um. I will be Revenge Pro this weekend. Next weekend after that, Premier uh, Championship Wrestling in Cleveland. Uh, week after that, IWC uh, for Cage Fury. Uh, week after that, uh, I really wish I had my calendar in front of me and for, uh, for that. But uh, a couple other big shows coming up in August. Stomp Out Cancers in August. Make sure you check that out. That's always uh, uh, for a great cause. Chase Owens versus Lee Moriarty. That'll be announced. a hell of a match. Yes. Uh, current Bullet Club member versus Lee Moriarty. Uh, great opportunity for Lee. Uh, really looking forward to that match. Um uh, I'm going to miss dates, so check out Rise, check out Premier, check out IWC, check out Route 33, check out Imagine Wrestling, uh, check out Revenge Pro, and I'm sorry if I missed the... Come, hold on. I want to think about all the companies I'm a champion did, for. Did somebody... Did, mm-hmm. did, wait, 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 wait. Did, hold on. I got to pull this up here. I got to show this video. Is this... That is, is, at, that, that a, is Imagine Wrestling. Is that a backflip off of a monster truck? That is uh, that is Jimmy the High Flying Hippie and one of my students, Parrish Sahara. Uh, and he is doing a moonsault off of a monster truck tire. They had that guy at a biker rally? Yep. Oh, how'd that go? Uh, You know what? <laughs> they they were the hippie, I'm sure. Yeah, well, they were enthusiastically yes. supporting everybody. So. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> no, it, no, it didn't go dark. Trust good. me. Thank we you. thought it might go dark. Oh, and uh, Rise is air-conditioned uh, for, the, <laughs> for their summer shows. Yeah, the video was next. <laughs> yeah, I always like, it's like, our great air-conditioning. What's the match going to be? Shut up. We have air-conditioning. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, you got to go with the, the 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 best of them, right? Thank yeah. you, everybody. Thank you, Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitters. Go watch Rookie of the Year. Yes. Also, uh, well, uh, the reason uh, Pittsburgh Current 
uh, Thursday morning on their Facebook, we were, were going to have uh, the star of Rookie of the Year. I don't have his name right. Thomas Ian Nicholas Sorg. Thank you. Sorg, Who's, Sorg, who, Sorg. I, I understand you're tying it in. That's not the reason to watch Rookie of the Year. That's an added bonus. The reason okay. to watch Rookie of the Year is because it is a cinematic classic. That's not cinematic a cinematic classic film. And not about Jackson Argos. Yes. No. Um, no. It would it would be terrible if it was about it'd just be a guy, you know, talking to us and getting called Canada dry for two hours. Yeah, and then that's just an episode of the Indie Mayhem show, which you can also check out over on wrestlingmayhemshow.com and indie wrestling.us. Um <laughs> If I had a round table with just Team Storm members, would it just be like, like, like what would go with a circle jerk? Po- <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I've been at that. Is it pro- I've drank. <laughs> I, I've been, I've been drinking at one of those. It's a circle jerk. <laughs> Guys, oh, you're you so fantastic. Much. Oh, you're God. You're fantastic as well. That's basically what that that show was. Uh-huh. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.